This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody. It is Lenny Murphy from Greenbook here with another one of our CEO series. And this is one that is long overdue and I've been very excited about. Um, today, chatting with, uh, with my good friend, industry legend, Meryl Dubrow from Mark Research. Meryl, welcome. Lenny, it's an honor and a privilege to be here, to be talking to you, and I'm ecstatic to, to have uh, some contact with your listeners. Uh, well, the uh, the honor is ours. So, uh, you know, for those who don't know, I, uh, Meryl was kind enough to ask me to be on his podcast, which is excellent. If you haven't heard uh, On The Mark, you should uh, go seek that out uh, because it's, it's great. I wouldn't say listen to our interview. It's probably the worst of any of the Mark uh, On The Mark interviews, but... <laughs> Uh, I thought, you know what, um, uh, it, it's time to reciprocate and and do this. So uh, how's that going? How's the On The Mark podcast going, Meryl? You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, again, that wasn't really my idea. I had written, as you know, a blog for 10 years, three times a week. I took a hiatus about three years ago. My team members asked me to bring it back. We talked about it. Um, we strategized about it, and we decided – to go in a little bit different direction and start the On The Mark podcast. Uh, it took about two seconds to name the, uh, get the name for it, which was interesting yeah. because I think it is a good name and people really like it. The other thing is that I wanted to do is tie it to our heritage. I'm very much into legacy from Mark Research. We've been around for, since 1965. So we're in our 56th year of business. And this year I'm committed to do 56 podcasts, which you were on uh, one last week, and it was phenomenal. So those who have not listened, um, you should, because Lenny, once again, there's tremendous takeaways, and I thank you enough for that. Uh, well, thanks. That, I appreciate that. The check's in the mail, Meryl. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, well, welcome to the new normal. Um, my my son just walked in. Um, uh, <laughs> this is the new normal. Um, uh, Zeke, I'll get with you in a few minutes. I need you to go out and close the door. Okay, thank you. That's my son, Zeke. I love um, that. Hi, Zeke. It's good. <laughs> that that is a first in the Green Book uh, CEO uh, uh, interviews. I guarantee it won't be the last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I hopefully he's going to be a second generation researcher, right, Lenny? So uh, I hope. Well, you know, my oldest daughter, um, she actually does have a degree in anthropology. Uh, her bachelor's is in anthropology. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, you know, there, there's she's taking uh, statistics right now for her, her graduate degree. So she's not gonna be a researcher. She's interested in public policy, but the uh, but you know there's there's some pieces there. So that's uh, that's good. Well, you know what? Let's let's use that as a segue because you know here we are. We're, we're in day three of the great lockdown, right? Um, yeah. Um, and uh, boy, what a ride, right? Uh, what we you and I we spoke what two weeks ago and. Uh, you know, if you would ask me then, uh, two weeks ago, that we would be here where we are right now, um, I, I couldn't have fathomed it. So, um, but here we are. So, let's let's talk about it because you and I, yeah, Mark's been in business for 56 years, right? You have weathered multiple storms um, over the years. You and I have both been in the industry for a long time, um, and you know, I think it would just be good to just chat about adaptation. So, why don't we start with? Uh, you know, how, how you as a CEO have led Mark uh, to adapt to this, this new situation. Uh, any, what, what have you guys done? Any tips that, that you can lay out from that standpoint? Yeah, I think that um, clearly this is an emotional time, right? As, as this situation gets closer and closer and closer to individuals, so at the beginning it was, 100 cases, 200 cases, most of us didn't know somebody who had it, so it wasn't as personal. Then you get people that you're aware of in the news or actors. So you get Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita. You get um, certainly um, Rudy Gobert and a number of folks who have it who are professional athletes. So it gets a little bit closer. Um, with each and every day, the number goes up. Um, the percentage increases dramatically. This is very dynamic. So what we thought about, and you brought up a good point, what we thought about two weeks ago, I never would have thought we were here today. Um, when we talked two weeks ago, we did it from my office. I'm now in my home office. Um, Mark has been shut down in terms of 
Everybody will work out of their home office until further notice. Um, I think that um, this is an opportunity for leaders to be leaders. You know, I've gone through this in the last 20 years, so I guess this will probably be the third time we've gone through this, Lenny, in 2000, you know, obviously 9-11, and we had 2008, and here we are in 2020. As Winston Churchill once said, don't waste a good crisis, right? So what that means to me is, um, you know, leaders have to be leaders. I think it's going to increase our efficiencies. I think it's going to get us closer to our clients, get us closer to our staff. And I think that how we handle this will set the course for many, many decades to come. Um, what have we done or what have I done as a leader? A lot. So um, quickly, you have to think about getting IT and making sure everybody is set up. Does everybody have laptops? Thankfully, everybody in our company did have a laptop. Um, you have to make sure that the phones are rolled over. And you got to think about every little detail, Lenny, as you know, about mail. I mean, in order to pay people, we need receivables to come in. Well, what happens if we're not here? How do we get the checks? Because some clients still pay by check as opposed to ACH electronically. And okay, well, what do you, you got to take that further? What if what if the mailman can't get into our building and the building, somebody in the building has it and they lock down the entire building? So do I have to install a mailbox outside? So it's everything. I think one of the huge takeaways for me, Lenny, is we're all in this together. So I quickly on um, on Monday had sent out an email to six CEOs, people that I respect in the business, you know, people like Adam from Delvinia and Kim Harrison from Focus Forward. And, um, you know, we had Don Golden from Precision Sample and we had Sarah from field work and we had Tiffany on as well. Um, and just talking, we're all in this together because I have blind spots, you have blind spots. I mean, I know you're very passionate about what happened at Rock Hopper and I think there's a tremendous amount of learnings, but you're really open about that, which I respect so much because people aren't always like that. So the six of us got on a call yesterday that I hosted and we just talked about the business and we helped each other with you know, what's our business continuity plan? What, where, what are the blind spots? What did we not think about? I didn't realize that for, if you put somebody on, um, if somebody has to get unemployment, that the law reads that if they make, let's say the maximum is $500, and I'm not sure exactly what it is in every state, but let's say it's $500. Well, they can make 30% more than that and, um, and still collect the maximum number of unemployment. So in essence, they can make 650 or if it's $600, you know, they can make, you know, 780 or whatever it is. The reality is I didn't realize that. And there was a lot of sharing that we had on the call. So to me, that's probably one of the best things I've done. I have a huge pool of folks like yourself and, you know, Simon Chadwick and Steve Schlesinger. I mean, you know, I can't tell you how many times a day I talk to Steve. Have you thought about this? One of the things that somebody brought up, and I have a meeting in about an hour, Lenny, is about, you know, hackers feed off of this, right? So the problem is, and I didn't think about that because I'm not that smart. And the reality is we've got to make sure that cybersecurity, that we're locked down, that we're doing everything in our power. So again, I have a meeting in about an hour with our IT, with, um, you know, our internal teams to make sure whatever we have to do to lock down our systems even more and making sure that nobody opens up a crazy, you know, a crazy email and shuts us down even further. So, so those are some of the things that quickly that we're doing. Um, we haven't nailed down an entire plan. I can't tell you we, we know exactly what's on the horizon. I don't think anybody does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's all great stuff. We, uh, you yeah, know, for... Yeah, I think some of those things for granted because I've worked from home forever, right? So this is, uh, you know, some of those pieces in place. But but many people have not. Uh, right. So that transition point. I think what, you know, when I think about the, um, the, 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 I don't want to get too much into the rock hopper, but I read this some lessons learned. The, sure. um, you know, my decision to make sure that people were taken care of was the right decision for ethically? Was it the right decision for the business? No, right, the business, so that, that uh, just that focus on, you know, I need to keep people paid. I need to get, you know, groceries on the table, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, but without a 
adapting the business to support that, right? That was the challenge. That was the, the short sightedness. And so I take that lesson of, you know, we, it, it, through all of this, at least for me personally, um, I keep thinking, how do we help? How do we help? Because it, it's not just helping our employees, is your point, you know, how do we help our, our business partners? How do we help our yeah. vendors? How do we help our suppliers? And how do we help our clients um, uh, who are also going to be under intense pressure? Uh, you know, I mean, God, you know, any airline industry, hospitality industry, uh, you know, so many, you know, major players from, the, uh, from a, a spend standpoint um, are now just reeling in ways that, you know, no one could have ever anticipated. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just keep going through my head of, you know, what can we do uh, to get better? Um, and there's obvious answers around, you know, prices are going to go down. There's no way around it, right? We're going to be under intense price pressure. You know, we're yep. going to have to talk about margins, um, the, uh, um, you know, just to, to maintain, right? Just to, to get that. We're going to have to get smarter in, uh, in how we do business. So of course, you know, focus group facilities. I was on the phone with, uh, uh, with a good friend who owns a focus facility uh, yesterday and, you know, they're, they're rapidly pushing everything online because they have no choice. So, you know, they, they must do that. Um, and I think there will be some long-term uh, long -term transformational pieces to that, which will be good overall once yeah. we're through this crisis, right? We'll get smarter and better and, and, uh, and hopefully even more, uh, more compassionate, you know? Yeah. So yeah. The, uh, but getting there. Right. There's a saying I've heard that, you know, one door closes, the other one opens, but those hallways are a bitch, right? That in between, uh, <laughs> you know, as we're going through these things. And yeah. so the focus is on, on the in between. So think, sorry, it's my very long winded lead in to ask, so just think about that hallway, right? That we're all in now. Um, what are some things that you've thought about that Mark can do um, to help your? You know, help your employees, help your partners, you know, help your vendors, and help your clients that are different than what you've done in the past. Yeah, so so I'm going to answer that a few different ways. I'm going to say what Mark can do, and I'll say what I personally will do. Um, I'm very close to everybody in the company. Um, they have my cell phone number. Uh, they can text me. They can call me. I'm available. I do updates to the team uh, every other day. I'm going to probably do some video. Um, uh, video messages, um, constant contact, number one. Number two, if anybody get, you know, for every situation that we hear that um, every all Apple stores are closed worldwide except for one place and, you know, a number of other large chains that say, oh, yeah, we're going to take care of our, um, our part-time employees, our hourly employees, there's a ton of them, like Delaware North, unfortunately, in my great city of Boston, who is saying, no, we're not taking care of them. We're not, you know, it is what it is. Now, there's a tremendous amount of layoffs that's happening. Um, some will affect our staff, um, their spouses, or maybe their daughters or whatever. So everybody knows the message that I said, personally, the company is going to do everything that they can within their power. And I'll get to that in a second, but I will personally do that. So if somebody gets in a pinch, um, I will I will help out personally because why because it's the right thing today to do you and I are very very fortunate um, and a lot of our friends are the same situation so the, I think what what Mark can do and you know I have not thought for one second about um, cutting staff or cutting anything anybody who is supposed to get raises April first they will all go through I am not putting that on hold and the reason is my belief is it's an integrity thing right. So um, I need to be better. I need to be smarter to figure this out. And I need to improve the bottom line. And I don't want it at the expense of um, the staff. I think that's the wrong message. Look, this isn't hard to do. If I want to have better cash flow, that means I'm going to pay my vendors slower. And I'm going to take it from 30 days to 45 or 45 days to 90. Is that really fair? No, I started in the data collection field. And I don't want to do that. I'm better than that. I'm smarter than that. I'm not going to take out the easy thing. What I would say, and, and I mentioned the CEO call that we had yesterday with six of us, and we're going to have another one because everybody had takeaways, is companies are going to have to have some layoffs. What I would say is 
And I remember laying somebody off about four or five years ago, Lenny, and I said, hey, um, his name was Chris. And I said, hey, Chris, listen, I got good news and bad news. The bad news is I'm going to have to lay you off. The good news is I have a job for you. It's the same, pretty much the same job. It's the same pay. It's your same benefits. And it's two and a half miles from here. Okay. So the good news, bad news. So what I would say is to anybody listening to this is first and foremost, if something has to be cut within your company, please reach out to some of your network and say, hey, I've got some pretty talented people here. Can you use them? Because everything's not going to slow down. Every business isn't crushed right now. I was in CVS yesterday and the customer service person behind there says their sales have been off the roof. Now, granted, that could be temporary lending. That could be for two or three weeks and then they're, they're in trouble, but maybe not. I mean, their deliveries are coming in. The stuff is flying off the shelf. So I think that's one of the things we've got to do. And I think what you, what you said a few minutes ago is so true. This is going to, the country is going to band together. Your company and your vendors and your partners and your clients are all going to get together because this isn't just something that happened years ago in New Orleans, remember, or in Miami. Okay, this is in throughout or, or an earthquake on the West Coast in San Francisco in 89. This is this is the entire country. So it is going to bring everybody together, you know, everybody together. So I think that we all have to realize we're in this together. I mean, one of the calls I'm going to do today and listen, Jerry Thomas and I are friends, but he's a competitor of mine in Dallas, Texas. I like Jerry. Um, and I'm going to call him today and say, I have a cell phone. And I'm going to say, hey, what? Where, where are you with things? Here's what's going on with us. Is there anything that Mark Research or myself can do? Why? Because it's the right thing to do, because I know he's thinking about doing the same thing. So I think those are some of the things that you can do. Think about who's in your network. When bad things are happening, I think we all have to, um, you know, this is this is a ridiculous roller coaster, okay? So in the last 48 hours, I've shut down the office. We've won $475,000 in new business. We had that same number, well, that same number of postponements, okay? Not cancellations, but postponements. I have somebody close to me who is stage two cancer. I won a class action lawsuit that was ridiculous on illegal faxing, that we won that. And, you know, I knew of three companies that have had layoffs. And I knew somebody's daughter who was laid off with no severance as well. So it's it's this emotional roller coaster that I don't know about you, Lenny, but I'm trying to I'm trying to keep my my emotions in check. The highs I don't want to be high, and the lows I don't want to be low. And not to mention the fact that not only are we going through this, but the stock market is beyond a roller coaster, more down than up. So everybody is freaking out that they've just lost 30% of their investments and that comes into play too. So it's it's just a calming influence. I think it's people like you. I think it's people like Melanie Cartwright from the Insights Association, Steve Schlesinger, Simon Chadwick, and others, many people who have such a great, I mean, you don't realize, your, 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 your son Zeke, who we saw 10 minutes ago, he doesn't realize, and I mean this sincerely, how influential Lenny Murphy is how much weight your voice carries in the insights industry and you just calling people and saying hey i went through this before you're going to get to the other side what can i do and i commend a lot of people i saw yesterday kristen luck um, had a post somewhere on linkedin that said hey free services what can i do to help get to the other side of this and she even said underneath it hey no there's no catch here this is I'm going to offer my consulting services and my and my team members as well. And I commend her for doing that. So those are the things that we have to do. I think leaders in this industry, it's time to step up. They always don't need us. There was plenty of years, Lenny, at Rock Hopper, where, frankly, they didn't need Lenny Murphy. The company was doing great. They were satisfying clients' needs. They were delivering great research. They were very profitable. And you weren't needed as much. But now we're all needed. Leaders are needed right now. Thank you for that, Marilyn, and, sure. and ditto to you, right? The, the CEO, you. some of you and Steve have done over the years, uh, uh, the, you know, your blog, uh, which I have missed it, right? The, uh, uh, 
Uh, I'm glad that the other podcast, I mean, yes, maybe now it's time to be visible and try and help as best we can. Um, and it's certainly my intention. There's a lot going through my head right now. There's a lot of things that we're thinking about, yeah. both for me personally, on the, the Gen 2 side of the business, on the Green Book side of the business, uh, right. on the beer you know, the, our, uh, our uh, data product, Savio, our, our um, uh, talent marketplace. So it's yep. been kind of mothballed. We're thinking now's a great time to resurrect that, right? We need to connect people to the opportunity. So lots going on to think about how we do that while also <laughs> juggling, you know, personal concerns, right? The, uh, yep. the, we, we, were, we were not homeschoolers for a reason, right? Uh, it was not something we thought we'd be successful at. Um, but here we are. We're homeschooling now. So yep. uh, you're right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, as you said, the, just the, the roller coaster. Right. I, I, so talk about this for a minute. I kind of carry on uh, that. You know, for everybody listening, for me personally, I'll tell you, I go through uh, through any day. I go through moments of, of optimism and hope and thinking. All right, this is how you know. I, I see some paths through this. I see what the long-term outcomes are going to be. They could be positive. To holy shit, right? I mean, literally, um, excuse the, the vulgarity, but that's, you know, I think that we can all relate of, you know, wow, that there are profound human impacts to this and taking aside people being sick, but the, all the other pieces. Um, and it's tough. It's tough to manage all of that. Uh, and I've had to just get to the point. I, I actually had a little bit of a freak out last Friday um, with that holy shit moment. And, and I, I posted about it, but I had to admit that I was afraid, right? That, and, and just own that. It, yeah, it's not yeah. Thing for me to say that I'm afraid of something, right? Uh, you know, my macho ego, you know, all those things. Sure. And I said, and just had to own it. And it wasn't afraid for me personally. It was afraid for my family, afraid for you know broader implications, you know, those types of things. So, so there's a tip too for everybody. Let's own while we're staying busy and focused on doing stuff that we're also human. Um, and you know, fear is fear of the unknown is a totally rational and appropriate reaction right now we just can't let it yeah. mobilize, mobilize. We have to do yeah I, I think you bring up a lot of good points i mean unfortunately um well my dad passed away about a year and a half ago and my mom lives 1500 miles from me uh same from my sister laurie and about 800 miles from my sister cheryl so you know she's in her 80s um she lives in a country club in florida if this gets into her country club, um, unfortunately, some bad things are going to happen to some amazing people. So you worry about that. So it's, hey, I, I do think that the country is probably going to be on lockdown within 48 hours, maybe 72 hours um, to control this, to contain this. And I'm thinking, OK, do I book a flight today to go to Florida in in a month just to see her, make sure she's OK, help out? Um, it's it's hard. I, I think that we leaders, true leaders, should step back and say, hey, look, you know, Lenny, you can see that I've got sports stuff behind me. I, you know, if I turned around, you there's probably a hundred and fifty things in this office that are signed. Um, I tend to be fairly competitive, and this is leaders Super Bowl. This is the seventh game in the World Series. How are you going to handle this? How are you going to react? And I think that we all need to realize that there's this is going to be a defining moment in your life, in your career, in the legacy of your company of how you handle this moving forward. And I think right. that you've got to do it in a way that um, is with TLC. I tend to be, as you know, a glass half full type of guy, but I can't have too uh, too much optimistic behavior, right? I mean, I had a discussion with somebody on my internal team this morning at 6.30 about, okay, you know, we want to share good news, but it's a funny thing. How much good news do we want to share, right? I mean, with everything going on in the world before people start to turn me, tune us out, right? I mean, to give you an idea, I mean, I have this little contraption on my wrist, this Fitbit. Um, yesterday before three o'clock, I had 21,000 steps and I didn't work out. So you can tell that I'm I'm on the phone, I'm pacing, I'm thinking about this. I want to make sure I think about every little angle. You know, any of my any of my friends, I, I don't tell them what to do, but I say, look, guys, we don't know where this is headed. So I would I'm doing a few things. Number one, I would go out and get four or five books of stamps, 
who knows what's going to happen. I also wouldn't have any of your cars less than half a tank of gas. I also would make sure you have, you know, two or three thousand dollars cash in the house. We don't know what's going to happen, and I don't, I don't want anything else to happen um, other than this to go away. But I think you've got to be prepared. So, you know, if there are best practices or things that we should be doing, and I'm not going out. Uh, Adam, Adam from Delvinia sent me a, sent a bunch of us a funny thing about me pushing. He photoshopped my face pushing a, a shopping cart with about seventeen thousand. Um, yeah, 17,000 rolls of toilet paper. I'm not doing that, but I think that there are other things we can do. And I think, I think we should be sharing those things um, yeah. Yeah. is what I would suggest. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. That actually gives us some other ideas on uh, tips, survival. You yeah. Know. Uh, yeah. And I've been doing that. Uh, you know, Jay Walker Smith from uh, sure. Future Smart Guy. One of the smartest, yeah. one of the smartest people in, in research. Love Walker, uh, and we're friends on Facebook, and that's a privilege. And, and Walker's been every day has been uh, posting an idea, you know, of and very pragmatic, you know, kind of consumer-based ideas. You know, sure. Like, hey, go buy some gift cards for a local restaurant. Don't use them. They need the cash flow, right? And when all this is right. done, you've already prepaid for your celebratory meal. It's just things like that. I'm actually I, I'm going to reach out to Walker and get him to come on uh, and do an interview with him as well. It's a great idea. Um, yeah, and just your you know to your point of just sharing, sharing the yeah. uh, those type of things because we're all in this together. Now, Meryl, I think you and I we both love to talk. We could go on forever, uh, but everybody else probably doesn't want to listen to us forever. Um, what I would like to do is one is you and I as friends. Let's stay in touch. Uh, to your point, we're yeah. we're all we all we're all leaders, and if there are things that uh, that I can do, um, that Green Book can do, that Gen 2 can do, that Very Lift, or you know, all these things that I have my fingers in that we can do, um, we're in, right? We're, we're going to try and do what we can. Um, uh, and since you're talking to so many folks, you talk to more people than I do, um, I think. So yeah. uh, let me know what we can do to help. Yeah, I think. And what I'm going to do, Lenny, is I just wrote down my phone number. Hopefully you can, I don't know if people can see it, but here's my phone number. If they have a question, a bit. can you see it now? Yep. Can you see it? Or... All right. 214. Yep. 214 493 6569. Meryl Yeah. All so right. if there's anything I can do, that's my cell phone number. If there's anything I can do for anybody or any questions or they have an idea they want to share that we can get out. I mean, we have a pretty look. I'm connected to almost 27,000 people on LinkedIn. That's a big number. So I can get a message out pretty quickly. Um, and I, I can't thank you enough, Lenny, for doing this, for everything that you deliver to the insights industry. I mean, you are you are an, an icon and a legend and somebody whose voice really is, um, it impacts others and you should be very proud of that as your your family um, should know what their dad means to, to all of us, which is a great deal. All right, uh, you almost prompted another first of me tearing up. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay, off. Lenny. Lenny, we'll keep it real. Hey, imagine the title on this. Lenny, Lenny gets, Lenny cries. Come on, <laughs> you know. I mean, think about, think about the title of this podcast. We could go with right. Lenny, Merrill, Lenny Merrill, keeping it real, keeping it real. Um, sure. Yeah. My friend, thank you. You know, uh, God bless. You know, good luck. Um, the uh, hang in there. We're, we'll all get through this. And if there's anything I can do to help you or anybody else, yep. you know, please reach out. Those who are listening, you saw Meryl's phone number. Uh, I don't know if I had your cell phone number, Meryl. So, boy, that's uh, that's quite the... <laughs> everybody. Um, and, you know, thank you. Thank you for this. This was uh, sure. it was great. Sure. Great session. So, appreciate it very much. Thank uh, you, you. take care. All right. All right, bud. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.